y'all. My name is Lucretia Malone, and I want to say welcome to my channel if this is your first time watching a video, and if you are not new you here, uh, welcome back. So tonight, well, or whenever you guys are watching this, but it's night for me, I just wanted to kind of share some of what I've been studying in the Word and kind of just talk through it. Uh, me just personally being transparent, y'all, I love studying the Word of God. And oftentimes when I'm studying it, I'm by myself, but I'm like, this is so good. And I'm just kind of like imagining like, you know, what I would tell somebody or something like this and just be wanting to share it. So why not? Let's share it. Let's, let's do this together. Um, you can pause this video if you want to grab your Bible and study along with me. And I will be coming from Psalm 27 tonight. So let's get into the word. Well, before we get to word, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your kindness, which drew us to you, God. I thank you for your brand new mercies every day, God. And I thank you for your wonderful, wonderful grace, Lord God, that has carried us and been with us through this week, God. God, I thank you, Lord God, for your presence, Lord God, and I invite you even into this study session, God. I thank you, Lord God, for your word, God, and I thank you for guidance as we study your word. I thank you, Lord God, for a greater understanding, and I thank you, Lord God, for a sweet peace, Lord God, that will rest on us, Lord God, as we receive your word. I thank you, Lord God, for preparing the hearts of your people to receive your word, God, and that everything that goes forth today will fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get into it. Okay. So a little background on Psalm 27. So this particular psalm was written by King David. And it was about around like 10th century BC. So I'm just giving you a little background so you can follow on some of the language, some of the terminologies, and even just some of the analogies he might be using. Well, in his case, they probably weren't analogies, but I'm saying all this to say. Um, so David was a soldier. He was in battle a lot, and in this particular case, I don't know if he's actively in battle, but I know he's testifying of who God has been to him and who he trusts God to be when he is in battle. So in that, you're going to hear a lot of terminology that has to do with war. Um, and then one thing in particular, like he talks about tents. So that's a temporary shelter that people will use, you know, while they were on the battlefield. And then he also refers to a tent of God because it was custom to have a sacred place um, for the spirit of the Lord to dwell where they would go and worship. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Disclaimer is done. <laughs> so I'm just going to read through it. And for the most part, I'm going to read through it and hold my Christian standard uh, version because that's typically what I love to use to study the Old Testament. And then, um, but there are are some uh, verses that I will be pulling King James version too because I grew up studying King James version and sometimes it just hit a little different for me and I want to point out um, just some terminology that may be a uh, just help the word resonate with you more or at least it resonates with me more when um, using those different types of terminology okay so first verse the Lord is my light and my salvation whom should I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? When evildoers came against me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies stumbled and fell. Though an army deploys against me, my heart is not afraid. Though a war breaks out against me, still I am confident. I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple. For he will conceal me in his shelter in the day of adversity. He will hide me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be high above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices in his tent with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Lord, hear my voice when I call. Be gracious to me and answer me. My heart says this about you. You are to seek my face. 
Lord, I will seek your face. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not leave me or abandon me. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord cares for me. Because of my adversaries, show me your way, Lord, and lead me on a level path. Do not give me over to the will of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing violence. I am certain that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait for the Lord. Whew. One thing I, can, I love to say about the word, like, you know, it's good enough by itself, but I will just uh, take the opportunity to just kind of point out some things that I feel like uh, make things more clear um, and maybe help them help you resonate with them better. So firstly, when it says the Lord is my light and salvation, the meaning of the word salvation meaning preservation or deliverance from harm. So once again, he's talking about this in terms of war and being out there in battle. So he's calling, he's he's saying God will protect him. God will keep harm from coming to him. Then he says the Lord is the stronghold of his life. Of whom should he be afraid? And stronghold is defined as a place that has been fortified to protect against attack. Whew. Now, to me, one of the th two of the two things I see when I when it comes to studying the word, um, studying this particular thing when it comes to David is one, David is saying he's not afraid, but not because. He's coming from some prideful place, not because he's saying he a man, not because of anything that he has, any type of weapons he's putting his trust in, or even his own men that he has to fight with him. But he's literally saying he's not afraid because God is with him. That's good stuff. <laughs> and next, I feel like I feel like verses one through six. David is taking time to remind himself of who God is and good, who God has been to him, who he's seen God to be, and therefore building up his faith. And I think this is important anytime um, we come to pray um, before the Lord, because if we're not coming to God to pray in faith, then we might as well not pray at all. Because we have to believe that God, God stands ready and can and is willing and is able to do what we're going to ask him to do. Or we might as well not ask him to do it. And so I believe, well, it's apparent that in verses 1 through 6 that David is kind of reminding himself of who God is. Then in verse 7, he starts to pour out his heart because it kind of changes in who he's talking to. He actually starts to cry out. He actually starts to cry out to God. But at the same time, he's still doing that reminding thing um, at the same time. But he also is talking to God. And some of the verses I wanted to point out in King James, um, starting with verse 4. So King James Version says, One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Just to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And I remember studying that um, as a young teenager. And I said to myself, David, you sure know what to say. <laughs> now, at the time when I was reading that, um, I, was just, I wasn't in a place where I was studying the whole, um, I was studying the whole chapter in context. I would kind of just you know, pick around, pull out scriptures and stuff like that. And I was just like, you know, wow. So I was thinking like, I kind of inferred what he meant and was saying, oh, he's just going to go in there and just be worshiping and just sitting at the feet of the Lord. But it's just like, it's more than that. Because yes, he did say that in the Lord's tent, he's going to be making sacrifices of joy. He's going to be singing. He's going to be making music. But more than that, he needs to be dwelling with the house of the Lord for God's protection, for God to cover him, for God to keep him. Um, and another verse I wanted to pull out, um, King James Version, is verse 13. Um, King James Version said, I would have fainted. 
unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's David. That's David speaking. And uh, I that verse was very important to me during times of my life where I had something big that I was praying and believing God to do for me. But I had never seen it before. And so I had to turn it into, for me, I would say, I would have given up. But I believe that I was going to see God's goodness in the land of the living. So I didn't. And so maybe that'll answer the question for a lot of people who might be watching this video. Because I hear a lot of people all the time saying, how did you not give up? <laughs> um, during certain situations in my life. And I'll probably share this testimony later on. But for me personally, um, that scripture is very important when it comes to not giving up. So, here's the reason um, I shared this, and I think this is important. Um, I was praying a lot um, about what to do next on my channel, and I started to feel that I needed to start to share God's word um, in words, and I just um, and in that, I kind of just been praying. I was kind of just like, oh, okay, well, you know, New Year's coming up. You know, we'll do Happy New Year, and, you know, the great thing is planned for the year. And Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance how my new year started last year, and it was difficult. It started with loss. I lost a very close loved one to me, and so my new year began with grief. It began with mourning. It was difficult. <laughs> it was very, 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 very difficult. And so I really just wanted to take time to Encourage someone whose new year might have started with some difficulty or it might have been a continual difficulty from last year. And I want to encourage you with this, that even though your circumstances might seem to be difficult, they might seem to be impossible even, um, where you are and how you feel and what you see it doesn't mean that God isn't moving on your behalf. It doesn't mean that your season didn't change. It doesn't mean that this isn't a happy new year or a new year for you because it still can be. And I say it like this. Um, while that happened at the same time in parallel last year, at the beginning of last year, I was also in... Uh, well, I guess I'm testifying now. I was also um, in the middle of my application cycle for medical school. So I was filling out, we have to do something called secondary applications, where basically the schools are like, you know, hey, I kind of like what I saw in your primary application. Can you answer a few more questions or write a few more essays to kind of tell us more about yourself and all of that? And so I'm doing all those things and um, I'm working um, as a nurse assistant um, and you guys can just imagine how that is during the times that we're currently living in. And so, and I'm just, I'm just being intentional and I'm just being faithful in what I felt like I was supposed to be doing in that season of life. And so fast forward, I am in medical school. <laughs> so I got accepted and God answered my prayer and God, um, brought forth things that I had only dreamed about doing but the road to get here was not easy. The road to get here was full of tears. The road to get here was overcoming difficulties or even sometimes not necessarily overcoming, but keep going despite the difficulties, kind of pressing through the difficulties, maybe even having to drag along the difficulties. And how was I able to do this? I was able to do this because I was grounded by the word of God, I was able to do this because I was surrounded by the love of God, the love of God being tangible in the people of God. I thank God for my village, those in my village, my family, my friends watching this. Hey, y'all. And how, how would they encourage me? They reminded me of the word. They reminded me of the word. And had I not previously chosen to believe that the word of God is true. Had I not previously chosen to stand on the word and understand that it is, it is what is my foundation, it is what supports me, 
You see what I'm saying? That reminding of the word would have done nothing for me. But I had faith. <laughs> and I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So what I want to say to people who are believers and may have just may just be weary right now. They may just be. I don't know how to put this. They may be weary. They might have given up hope. Or they might just be overwhelmed by their life circumstances. I want to just encourage you to hold on and to try again to believe God's word. Go back and revisit those scriptures that you used to cling to, that used to make your heart leap. Go back and listen to those worship songs or even open your mouth and worship it yourself. Do whatever you must to remember God's goodness. Replay those testimonies of the time that God has shown up in your life. Because if you have been walking with God any number of any number of time, whether it be years, days, hours, or minutes, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you have seen God move in a beautiful way in your life. If you are connected to people who have a relationship with God, I'm pretty sure you have seen God move in their lives let those testimonies be encouragement to you because this is still the same god you serve he did not change circumstances they changed people the world it changed god did not so what you need him to do in your life now he can still do that and I'm not even asking you to go off of, oh, it's going to turn around and be beautiful because it's turned around and was beautiful for Quisha. No. It's going to turn around and be beautiful because it's going to turn around and be beautiful for you. God is no respecter of persons. He loves each of his children. And the promises that he has in his word, they're for each of us. I pray that somebody was blessed by this word. <laughs> um, I really, really, really enjoy this passage of scripture. I feel like, and I just also want to just share again that this is David expressing who he knew God to be. Everything that I was just telling you about going back and remembering and all these other kinds of things, because that's exactly what David did. David was just recalling the times before that he had seen God be God. He had seen God be great. He had seen God be a protector. He didn't pull this faith out of thin air. He was more so asking God to do it again. So if it's something you're going through and it's difficult, ask God to do it again. Let's pray, y'all. God, I just thank you for your word. I pray right now, Lord God, for any of my sisters and my brothers who are out there who are mourning. I thank you your word says that blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I pray, God, that during these times of mourning, Lord God, that they will run to you. They will run to you, run to your shelter to be protected, even from the circumstances of their life. They might not be in physical war like David. They might be. But whatever it is that is causing them harm, whatever it is that is causing them to fear, whatever it is that is causing anxiety, I pray, God, that they will run into your stronghold and be protected in that and gain confidence in you to protect them from anything that will try to bring harm to them. I pray, God, that they will find the joy, hallelujah, from by being protected, that they can worship you. God, I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.